In today's episode of Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh, we continue laying the foundation with Book 1. This is Chapter 5, Section 5. Opening to the Experience Beyond Manifesting Hi, David. What is your guidance on the magic of manifesting? Since becoming aware of the dream and myself as the dreamer, I seem to be experiencing a period of lack after over 40 years of never seeming to go without a relatively comfortable lifestyle in this world. I have heard you talk about manifesting as magic and that it is merely a way of showing people they are not not victims and that the mind is truly powerful. Yet, as you and the Course say, the world is not real. Any manifestation is simply more dreaming and I do not want to prolong the dream. In my wrong mind, that is, for as we know, it was over as quickly as it began, for one second longer than absolutely necessary. Do you see it as a necessary step in one's spiritual development to learn the skills of manifesting? Or can I somehow learn how to let go of any attachment to money and the seeming security it seems to provide and surrender into the abundance of what I really am without experiencing the concept of manifesting. And if this second step is possible, how does that look and feel in this world? I want to help my brothers wake up. I want to fulfill my one function and purpose in this world, and it is bringing up fear and feelings of limit and control. What can I do to ease this transition and release this fear with grace? Beloved one, the best indicator of connection to God is how one feels. This indicator is the best because it is not dependent on any particular form outcome. A mind that looks to form outcomes is deceived and will not experience a lasting peace. State of mind, how one feels, is the outcome of which thought system one is aligned with, God or ego. Such is the case with manifesting money skills, resources, etc. Money, for example, is nothing. If a mind believes in ego, belief in lack, reciprocity, money is endowed with false value. The belief in lack, reciprocity, is the belief in substitution. For the ego is the chosen substitute for source, for God. The reason money seems valuable is because it seems to be highly exchangeable for many things that meet illusory needs, whether they seem emotional, physical or spiritual. Like medicine, Money is like the magical spell of the world that seems to make illusory problems disappear for a while. Yet, until the ego has been released entirely, the mind perceives needs and external means, false sources, to meet the perceived needs. It all comes down to this. One must accept oneself as changeless divine mind. 
The only step to this is realizing that the world cannot change, for it is an unreal effect of an unreal cause. The world cannot change. Asking for things to be different than they are is an impossible request. Money, like all effects, images of the ego, is never a source. The meaningful request is a request to see the world differently as an unreal effect of an unreal cause and to thus accept the fact that there is only one source. God is the only source. The only question, problem, confusion is one of identity and has absolutely nothing to do with money. Trust would settle every problem now for to trust is to be God-dependent. The reversal of thought necessary to realize God-dependence is a full 360 degree turn around, so to speak. And this means the realization that there are no cause-effect relationships in this world that are true. If all the images, including money, are effects, there is no cause or source to be found in this world. God is true source and Christ the true effect. Therefore, the secret to true prayer is to forget the things you think you think and think you need by withdrawing faith in the temporal and transitory. What is eternal is valuable as what is of time is valueless by definition. With regard to this world, purpose is the only value that can be given faith if you would be God-dependent. Giving and receiving are one. One always receives exactly what one asks for. The problem or confusion one may seem to experience in perception comes about from the belief in manifesting, which is the belief in time. Eternity does not manifest, being one forever. Manifesting is the belief that the eternal can take form, that infinity can become finite, that spirit can enter matter. Awakening is the experience of forgiving the illusion of manifesting. For what identity is, is spirit. Christ comes not into form, but calls you out of the world to recognize yourself as eternal spirit. Is there a willingness to release the idea of manifesting forever and experience peace of mind? This is the same as asking. Are you willing to accept yourself as God created you instead of trying to make yourself? The belief in manifesting 
can be released for it is not true spirit can and inevitably must be accepted for it is true the belief in linear time is a defense against the holy instant for time is but a denial of eternity beloved child of god you have been released of the grievance of time and there is no delay in what your thoughts create instantly and forever the belief in time and manifesting is an unwillingness to accept the instant answer now and one can only receive what one is willing to hear and see when one asks for a sign or an outcome or for accountability or money donated one asks a miss for one is asking out of lack when one has voluntarily released the beliefs in manifesting and time one can then honestly ask god what is your will for me prayer is always answered according to what the mind is willing to receive and in the deepest prayer of the heart you shall realize what is meant by the statement my thoughts create eternally there is a difference between create and make and a difference between extension and projection love creates the ego makes love extends the ego projects in love being and having are the same to the ego possession and having are the same in a world of lack what you get is what you have how utterly impossible is manifesting getting and how absolutely true is creation giving reciprocity is a question of identity trust is the way out of the false belief in a worldly identity it takes trust to change your mind so completely that you forget the concepts of time and manifesting forever and happily it requires only willingness and not time if you drop the thought process entirely you make way for the vision of christ if this be your desire the world of unreal effects will be shown to be causeless and you will laugh at the thoughts that money or any image could be a real source or that the holy child of god needs anything one's real thoughts create eternally yet no thoughts of the past or future are real thoughts the stillness of now is the answer the holy spirit will direct your thoughts and actions very specifically if you allow him give all concepts of money and manifesting and time to him to use for his purpose and they shall be removed from your holy mind for you are holyly mind and nothing of the world can ever be understood 
who you are is the meaning. Now everything is very, very simple. I make no demands, have never charged a fee for anything I share. Do not command or confront. Live in complete divine providence for everything without exception. Go only when and where I am invited as guided. Make no attempt to convince anyone or change anyone's mind and am completely affiliated with spirit. I live in the present moment and let the spirit give all that I experience. I call this God dependence. It works. It also requires lots of mind training to listen to only one voice, the voice for God. The benefits are immediate and wonderful. I am with you all the way, beloved one.